Hey guys, welcome back to my let's play of Cupid. As you can see, um, I could switch it over to game caption instead of the display capture, but I don't feel like it. So <laughs> have have fun enjoying my um my background. But anyway, hopefully we don't have any computer uh, difficulties today, and we can get as far as possible in this game. So let's continue. The second candle is lit. All I remember about this game is that she's trying, or from where we left off, is that she's trying to like do spells on him to try to make him more truthful, so she can figure out like what drove the friend to commit suicide, and the name is everyone's name is gone. So whatever. Okay, its name is Philia. That means like it's like love or something. The love for friends. Okay. The yellow candle shone and danced with her breath. Let this candle burn until it's wick is spent. Encourage friendship, bring forth the memories. Let me walk in his halls without any suspicion. Let me rummage through his belongings invisibly. His journal. He guards his journal fiercely. I must find it. And I think. Well, he was here. Yeah, they were in the, like the library, and he like yelled at her because she was like, "What are you writing?" Mm -hmm. Rosa adjusted her coat as she sat on one of the reserved seats. The theater was packed. The air buzzed with excitement. You could at least like draw the like shadow silhouettes, but I mean, I probably wouldn't have bothered either, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, she hadn't realized this many people would come tonight. Oh my god, I wish they would stop staring at me. And why not? This was... Madam Catherine... Yeah, that's her name. Catherine... P yeah, her still have not told me how to pronounce these people's names, so... I'm just skipping it. First solo concierto. Her name had been slowly gathering recognition the past few years. It was feasible to expect a full house. Still, the turnout was more than they had expected. Paris had taken Rose and Catherine by surprise. The sheer number of people and their liveliness were well above the usual sights of this small town. Catherine was obviously thrilled with the opportunity to play in such an esteemed venue for her debut. Rosa tried her best to keep her anxiety under control. This was for Catherine. Yes, for her. This was her night. Rosa took a deep breath and released it slowly. It relaxed her. I hope the show starts soon. Rosa's eye drifted Rosa's eye drifted towards the stage and then to the throng of people gathered on her far left. In the middle of the huddle stood a familiar shape of a man. He had his back to her, but the posture in the build were unmistakable. Th that is Guillaume. Well why wouldn't he be there? Why she acts so surprised? Her heart made a sudden gleeful jump. She was delighted that he had made it to Catherine's show. He had been traveling extensively recently. Okay. What if she walked over and made sure? Guillaume would greet her kindly. She was sure Catherine would be thrilled to know he was here. Rosa pond look Rosa pondered for a bit, reminded of a sudden wind's pain. Soon, the master of ceremonies obliged people to take their seats. What was that all about? Guillaume turned around and walked toward her. He stopped He stopped midway and took a seat without noticing her presence. Just because he didn't say anything doesn't mean he didn't notice you. It, Rosa seemed deep in thought. What's wrong, sweetheart? Is something bothering you? It, nothing, mother. Don't lie to me. I just didn't expect him to. St wow, reading. I just uh, didn't expect him to see him here. That's all. I don't know why I was mixing up words right there. Oh, I see. It is the same problem, isn't it? Does Guillaume's presence upset you? Are you worried about Catherine now that he's here? It's that filthy man again. I'm sure Catherine will be pleased. Whatever will she think now that her lover is back? 
I wish you would rather spend all her time with him, as usual. My poor darling. Always running after his star. I wonder how long until she is tired of you constantly tagging along. You bragged to me that you share everything like sisters. Does that include Guillaume too? Why would you share a guy j just because you consider some of your sister? Hmm. The, the, okay. Like, I know it's like, it's not, it's backwards logic to try to make her feel guilty, but, yeah. Okay, oh, you're making your life so complicated, darling. Why do you even bother yourself with these people? It is obvious that he, obvious he is never going to look at you. It is obvious she will abandon you. I'm going to go with this one, because the only reason, I think the only reason he would even look at her is because he, he gonna make, he gonna kill her, or like, just drive her to be miserable like Catherine became. Do you like being so miserable? It saddens me to see you like this. He has eyes only for Catherine. Must you always impose your presence like a little dog? It's not like that, mother. We're friends. Friends. Darling, friendship is nothing but a shallow kind of relationship. People change friends as easily as the weather. You don't even remember the friends you make at a certain age. Friendships do not last. Family is more important. So, I, I don't know, just like a, like, what is the mother? Like, is she an actual ghost? I'm very confused. But I'm going to put family is more important because it fits the character who's very, if she is like an actual spirit of some, of some she's very self-centered. So I feel she would say family is more important. And judging, you know, by what she just said. Yeah, I'm the only one who will care for you forever, darling. A mother's love will endure. This bond can never be broken by time or absence. Family lifts you up. It saves. Of course you feel this way. You see them often. But when you lose touch, you're left with nothing but a collection of strangers. And believe me, my dear, they will leave. They always leave. You amuse them now. But soon they will abandon you too. Rose's tongue felt bitter in her mouth. She was filled with annoyance for her mother. Wasn't happiness as fleeting as friendship? Yet it was not any less real than sadness. Yes, family was important. These familiar bonds kept her from losing herself. It was her rock, her foundation. But were these bonds the only constant value? These friends? They were people who accepted her. They shared laughter and tears, their own regrets and dreams. In her heart, she had found a home with them. What more was needed? Rosa's confused feelings began to arrange themselves neatly in her mind. Guillaume and Catherine's happiness was important to her. That was the main thing. She knew they felt the same way for her. Her insecurities were real, but they were insignificant. If anything, they were bittersweet. She had no regrets. For the first time in her life, she wanted to talk back to Mother. She bit her lip, quelling the nerves as she opened her mouth to speak. I, I knew that. Wait, do I actually have to choose that? I know that Catherine matters more to him than I do. I know they might abandon me one day for whatever reason. It might be today or next year. Or even sooner. But that doesn't matter in the long run. I am happy with them. We've had years together that I will treasure. Like I treasure mother memories of you too, mother. My memories of you keep me sustained. That is why I love you. I wonder if her mother, um was as manipulative as alive or is that just due to her own insecurities making the memory of her mother just always being down on her because that's just the voice she's hearing it in but that's really how she's talking to herself the years we spent together no matter how fleeting are still worth something so let me care for them right now Everything changes, but nothing is lost. Rosa was sure she had read it somewhere. Rosa waited for Mother to answer with a vicious voice, 
Too bad that screaming and her cheekiness. But no voice came. Rosa smiled to herself. The light stemmed. A low hush descended on the pews. Soon Catherine entered, clad in the loveliest gown and an even loveliest smile. She was beautiful. She belonged on the stage. The light shone on her, but they paled in comparison to her radiance. Catherine bowed to the audience and took a seat in front of the piano. She began to play. Do I have to click it? I don't think... I wonder if I can skip this. I mean, because I don't know how long it's going to take. But I mean, I guess it's nice. Whatever. Oh, well, I tried to make it bigger for you guys. I don't know if you can see that. It's larger for me, actually, but whatever. He rose a grip the handle of his seat. She felt surges of emotion with every note. A kind of energy passed through her, touching her skin and making her break into goosebumps. Oh, Catherine. Rosa hadn't known of such an effect before this moment. Music that could so strike the heart as if it were fiddling with the soul. It was different from practice, different from when she was performing in front of smaller groups. This was a stage, and here was a woman with strings. She was tugging the right keys, touching your heart and electrifying your soul. Rosa realized she wasn't alone in this feeling. The whole room was mesmerized. She looked at the lady beside her seat. She had her hand to her open mouth. A teardrop dangled precariously on her eye. The man to her left seemed to have forgotten to blink. Rosa beamed and savored a rush of kinship with them. They were experiencing the same emotions with her. It made her love them just a little bit. Rosa closed her eyes and savored the night. Okay, <laughs> a bead of sweat swelled from Catherine's chin. She was out of her body now. Her stress from the beginning would show her thought and turn into passion. It ran down her fingers to the keys. It did not escape Catherine's notice that most people in the crowd came to the show to gawk at her. Catherine purred, purred, 
The one that the infamous Marquis de Gaulle had been courting for years. Didn't he pay for this event? Lucky broad. Catherine Preet. I heard she was some pianist. Any good? Who knows? Must be. If even that Marquis is chasing her. Catherine Preet. Some female pianist. Pretty face, nice flesh on her. Let us watch her show. Her fingers caress the keys, playing them with the force of her heart. Did she play the pool them wrong? Her music saturated the theater with her fervor. No, not to prove them wrong. To set it right. Catherine Pareed is my name. I am more than just a pretty face. And I am playing this piece for you. It is my gift. Let me touch your soul. This is a long segment with not a lot going on. Can I fast forward again? Okay, Rosa felt her eyes get moist. This was Catherine's heart transcribed into music. All energy and beauty with the strength of the wind. This, the mischief of a sudden girl that whips at ladies' skirts and tips gentlemen's hats. The cold breeze that carried the loneliness of the coming winter. Everyone in the audience felt it. Rosa searched for Guillaume's face in the darkness. She couldn't see him clearly. But it didn't matter. She knew what he was feeling. She felt it too. Rosa's heart began to ache. It was a sting she didn't know how to name. Yeah, after the show, Rosa greeted Catherine in her backstage dressing room. I keep glancing over to make sure <laughs> it's still going. And she was smothered in flowers from the audience. Sweat, glisten sweat glistened on her forehead. Catherine gave her a tight hug. Congratulations, Cat. You were marvelous on stage. Thank you, Rosie. Catherine covered her cheeks with her hands. I'm still shaking. The excitement from the stage hasn't left. Look at my hands. <laughs> oh dear. So I recall the show was success, yes? Pour the champagne, Sherry. It is a night to remember. Catherine and Rosa hugged again. Let, let me just finish up here, Rosa. Then we'll celebrate properly. The young, the two, two young ravishing ladies sampling the best of what Paris has to offer. I like it. And she like her face. She still has nice faces. She's just older. Who's left? Just don't let go of my hand. You might get lost being so starry eyed. She was teasing but smiling brightly all the same. I would never. Anyway, shall I meet you outside in a few minutes? Very well. I'll see you later. Rosa was thankful to leave the backstage area. She had almost forgotten her anxiety during the show, but backstage was an ill reminder of the crowd. She looked forward to the night ahead, wondering vaguely why she hadn't mentioned Guillaume's presence to Cal. She shrugged it off. It had simply slipped her mind, that was all. Catherine went back to her dressing room, humming as she was about to grab her coat. She wasn't the least bit tired. Visions of city, or I guess visions of the city, maybe, whatever. Exploring new sites and gaining experience made her get away excitement. It will end the night on the best note, she was sure. A small knock interrupted her thoughts. Who's there? Catherine turned around and a cheerful smile froze on her face. The Marquis peeked from the open door and stepped inside. Hello, Kath. But how old is she that you're courting her? Fuck, creep. The tingling passed through Catherine's neck. Although she was the way he had returned, this was the first time she'd seen him in two years. The fuck are you doing in two years? Yeah, after she rebuked his intentions of wooing her, Catherine shook her head at the memory. They grew up together. It was normal to develop feelings for someone you shared most of your life with. Was it, was it not? Mm. Yeah, Catherine had promised herself not to dabble with the monkey. With all the rumors and the past feelings, it felt like she knew too much. Too complicated, she had reason. 
The rumors were still alive in some circles, but hadn't Guillaume become clean with his romantic escapades? Hadn't he vowed to be faithful since he had made his intentions clear? Hmm. Yeah, who to believe? Perhaps it was possible that Catherine pushed away the insinuation of that last thought and rearranged her face into a merry smile. She curtsied. My lord Marquis, thank you for coming. That last bit came out too loud in her ears. It felt like her voice was compensating. She suppressed a groan. I hope you found the show satisfactory. My lord Marquis. What happened to Gilly Monster? See, she's not a child anymore. That's what happened to Gilly Monster. At once, the memories flooded her mind. That used to be her greeting every time she had visited him back then. She was screaming when she saw him, right before she flung her arms around his neck. Catherine didn't know what to do. Suddenly, her hands, the hands that had never betrayed her, felt like they belonged to someone else. She cleared her throat and felt the smile harden on her face. Part of my past life, sir. I was a bit of a precocious child. After all, I must give my due respects to the sponsor of this event. Thank you, by the way. You didn't have to be so extravagant. Wasn't your dream to play in Paris, Kath? So I thought your debut would be the perfect opportunity for, to fulfill that dream. The Marquis stepped into her quarters and closed the door. The f Did Rosa do that? Because, um, girl, you need to get out. I'm just saying. I mean, when it's like... Uh, I don't know. I... Pretty sure, like I said, I didn't trust him ever since this game started. Basically, since he came into the game, I was like, oh, I already don't trust him. Just from the way he looks. And nothing has made me trust him. So, yeah, I think she in danger. Because I, I didn't just, I didn't never trust anyone until the game is over. Just in case this is your first time <laughs> being here. Yeah, Catherine flinched, afraid that the small wound would draw them even closer. Just the effect that he wanted, probably, the sly fox. She floundered for a bit, then contented herself and fussing with the flowers on the table. She should chase him out. Why wasn't she chasing him out? Murder? Murder? I don't know that word is. Catherine, I, I didn't think you'd be, att you'd be attending tonight, sorry. Weren't you traveling? Yes, I was. But I wouldn't miss your concierto for the whole of France. Guillaume stepped forward. And it seems, my investments were well placed. Dude, what the fuck? Guillaume drew closer to Catherine, so near she could smell the mint in his breath. Creep. He appeared to reach out. What? He appeared to reach out to her face. Either he did or he didn't. Like, she would see a hand coming towards her face. But changed direction at the last minute. Oh, oh these flowers are from the Duke. How pretty. He examined the card dangling a hair away from Catherine's ear, trying to look fascinated by the piece of decorative paper. Then he sat back, grinning like an idiot. Uh, he really has great taste. Whenever, wherever did you learn that, muckhead? If he thought that kind of ploy would make her swoon, then he was dead wrong. In fact, all the man wanted to do was wipe that stupid grin off his face. With the backside of the face. Yes, he does, doesn't he? She gritted her teeth, unable to take the acidic edge off her voice. It wouldn't be so hard. All she had to do was grab the neck of the expensive vase and fling it at his head. She wasn't sure if the vase would break. Maybe not. Maybe she needed to hit him again for the full effect. Jeez, Carmi. Catherine, did you hear what I said? said? Huh? I said, now that I'm back in town, would you consider playing for me again? It was part of our original arrangement, after all. She felt the tendon in her neck tighten. I have a full schedule this week, sorry, but I'll let you know when I'm free. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, I must retire for the night. 
I'm exhausted from my performance after all. Excuse me. Catherine turned around and went for a coat, but she felt Kiyomi grab her hand. Oh, wait. Dude, take, like, she ain't interested. Like, sh she has, she has basically said I'm not interested in, like, any of the way, basically. Like, she's turned him down. She's, like, she's trying to get out of the conversation now. Like, she, take no as an answer. Like, no, she doesn't want you. She's like, can you fucking come on? Like, damn. Because they stared at each other for a couple of seconds. Kiyomi looked like he was about to say something. His mouth opened and closed as if debating the correct word in his head. But he just ca dropped Catherine's hand a moment later. I I'm sorry, you're right. You must be tired. No, she's going to hang out with her friend because she don't want to hang out with you. And then his shoulders dropped. Catherine felt a tender disappointment, but she ignored it quickly. Guillaume let out a sigh. You know I'm not good at this, Catherine. Oh, what do I know? You seem to do just fine. You have an amazing track record. Huh? Catherine folded her arms over her chest with a pout. Oh, that. That is just because of my face. What? Most people think I'm very deep and thoughtful when I stare at them like this. I just went with it. I mean, honestly, it's honestly, same. Like some, but not in in that. But like some people do think like I'm thinking like really hard about something, and then like. I just kind of go along with it because I'm probably thinking about something really fucking stupid. But I'm just like, I'll I'll take it. And or people just think I'm mad. And I'm just like, I'm just, this is my face. What are you, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> the Catherine bit her lip to prevent the chuckle from escaping. But the laughter burst out from her. He hadn't changed at all. Before she could stop herself, a mysterious smile appeared on her lips. No, no. Actually, it is your inability to make big gestures, J Gilly. Huh? Well, look at you. She copies his tight, alert posture. You stand stiff as a board. I guess it fools people into believing you are a graceful, dashing soul. Giam, you made a pal. I am dashing, though. Maybe. Our contraire, Mr. Messiah, Michelle, man, France. I, I'm sorry for what I'm doing to this language because I don't understand. Because it's like I want to say what I'm reading, but I, it's probably not that. Cause I did have the misfortune of being victim to your dancing. Must you always bring that up? It was a long time ago. He looked so distressed that Catherine couldn't help but tease him further. I mourned the death of my little Tosai. I liked that too. It was a traumatic experience. Before long, they were laughing. Like it was the most natural thing in the world. When did it change? Hadn't it always been like this? Catherine settled back into her own skin, m mulling the confusion in her veins. It probably changed when, like, he he started like trying to like be romantic, and you were like, no, and he didn't listen. Probably around that time. Get cat. She looked up at him. Her own emotion stung her. You can't keep running away from me. Mm hmm. And she sighed deeply. Her hands tightened around her resolve for lack of a solid thing to hold on to. Perhaps not, but I've already given you an answer. I'm aware. So then, accept it. I've tried to accept it. Please don't take offense, but I thought it would be easy. I left to clear my head, to fill my mind with other things. Traveling usually does the trick. For a while, at least. I thought I was successful. But even during my trip, I would catch myself thinking about such absurd things, like, I wonder what Kath will say when she sees that. No, I don't think Catherine will like this too much. Hmm, well, Kath used to say. It was funny, but also a little infuriating to know that you've never left my mind. Oh, well, I'm 
that doesn't make her required to like do anything but be your friend like she has been like just <laughs> just because you have romantic feelings for someone does not mean they have to return them okay so i wish i knew how to do this i am um, he sighed i am too used to people leaving me that I do not know how to quit on my own it must bother you the amount of love that i had in the past i am sorry for that I almost wish I really was that adept, but like I have told you, most were simply rumors. The rest were people realizing I am not as interesting as they had initially thought. <laughs> yeah, they never stay long, Kat. One can say I am amazing with first impressions. There is a nagging feeling that's all I am even... I am ever good for. A sort of exotic trophy people like to collect for its sake and then put aside when its novelty expires. You're not gonna make me feel sorry for you. It's, it's, I can't blame them. But now I'm quite sure that I am what is wrong. Mm. I must be better at letting people go. But you, please don't make me let go. You see through me, Kat. In your eyes, I feel like I am somebody worth worth loving. Did he try the same shit with Rosa? Like later on, he's like to try to get that clothes and try to make him feel like, oh, I'm so sad and everything. Okay, in your eyes, I feel like I am somebody worth loving. It, did I read that already? Okay, it is. Is it any wonder I like to continue thinking of you fondly? Old habits die hard, I suppose. Catherine Bihillet. Those are impressive words, Sire, but do you have a point? My point? Uh, it's simple, really. I... I don't think I'll be able to stop my feelings for you. You may reject me as many times as you wish. It will not change. I've already come to the conclusion that I don't mind. He shrugged. So I propose that you either get used to me chasing you, or you give in to my dashing, toe-mashing charms. Catherine chuckled despite herself. Or I could just kill you with the Duke's fashionable race. <laughs> Please do not give my superior the pleasure. I would rather you at my heart out of my chest and Arthur as a dark sacrifice to the gods. <laughs> Gory. Very poetic. Dashing points for you. You think so? I've been reading a lot of romance novels lately. What kind of romance novels have you been talking about? I figured I must learn to be more suave to make the lady of my dreams soon. Is it working? Catherine laughed. Hardly. I believe this is how they do it in the big finale. Oh my god, you're annoying me. Okay, Kiyomi cleared his throat and knelt down on one knee. He took Catherine's hand awkwardly, trying to act as natural as he could. His serious face made Catherine burst out laughing. I, I'm not even attempting. What in the world are you doing, you idiot? Stop laughing, madame. I must try this at least once. I'm simply concerned for an older gentleman. This is me. Damn, Catherine. <laughs> Damn. Okay, will you be able to stand up from that position later, given your obvious grace? Gilmy chuckled. Terrible. Dare you call me an old man? I don't look my age, you know. Sure, sure. Oh, stop laughing, will you? I'm trying to concentrate. He cleared his throat again. Will Mademoiselle Catherine Perry allow me an audience tonight? As such, perhaps she might not allow me to stay by her side for a while longer. It would make me a very happy man. It was sappy and ridiculous, and yet, hearing the words did stare Catherine's heart. They were giggling like fools now, like children, her heart heavy with love for him. Love? Oh gosh, did she just think love? Like, she's like, oh. Of course she did. She had always loved him. Since when? Why was she fighting her feelings for him? 
fit why why is she fighting her feelings again? The reason seemed unclear all of a sudden. All right, sire. Your gallantry has convinced this lady to accept your offer for tonight. She bowed with an exaggerated curtsy. Guillaume took her hand theatrically as he stood up. Okay, uh... Oh my god, I don't want to leave off in the middle of a conversation. But you guys, I'm going to have to take a break. I'm going to cut this into two parts. I will be back in a moment even though it might be a few hours for you guys let me know if you want to double upload or not bye